Homely though, only want the pony yeah, show. When we back to backing, she ain't got no feelings, so it's back to acting. Shorty ain't an actress, so it's back to clashing. All right, today I'm going to give you 20 tips on how to be a better producer. This is good for beginners. Uh, you know, if you're a beginner, everything in here is going to be helpful for you. And but even if you think you know you know a lot, you've been doing this for a while, you might even be a pr producing for longer than I have. Some stuff in here is probably going to be helpful for you anyway. At least one tip, because you know I got 20 here. So stick around to the end. Hopefully, one of these 20 tips is good for you. So first one we're going to talk about <coughs> is how to EQ your melodies. So my main melody in this beat here is just this guitar. I'll play it real quick. <laughs> So you're going to see I got two EQs on this melody. The first one is for cutting out lows and highs. So I bring it to the preset 20 hertz plus the 18k cut. And I take the this on the right here, I bring it down to about roughly 12,000 just to cut out like this unnecessary high and that you really aren't going to hear anyway. So just to make clean things up a little bit. And then you want to bring this down to about 100 at the minimum. You can bring it up more if... Uh, the melody doesn't have too much low end, but this one does. So I just kept that at 100 just to keep it from uh, clashing with the kick in the 808. And then the second EQ you're going to want to put on is you're not going to touch the presets at all. The only thing you're going to touch is this number 4 here. And you're going to bring it somewhere around 1000 and just dip it down a little bit. Just because obviously most melodies are going to have a lot of frequency here at 4. And around 4 is where your kick is hitting hard and your clap and your snare are hitting to around a thousand hertz so cutting this out uh, would just help those stand out more in the mix and as long as you don't bring this down too much you really just have to listen when you do it it won't really change your how your melody sounds you won't even be able to tell that you did this next tip is going to be for our 808 so let me solo that out here's my 808 pattern it is real simple it's just so that's how that sounds um, so what you're going to do, on when you're listening to a beat on like your phone or something, the 808 is not going to hit as hard as when you're in the car or on a speaker or anything. But what you can do is you can add distortion to your 808, and that's going to make it hit harder on any type of speaker. So there's two ways you can do that. So on my 808, uh, I've used Fruity Fast Distortion. I don't touch any of the knobs. It's normally on A. I flip it down to B. And then I just lower this. Normally it's up to here. I just bring this down. Or the second thing you do is you can get this free plugin, which I'll bring up here. It's called Camel Crusher. This is real good for 808s. So it's the best one for making it still sound not crazy to sort, but hitting hard is British Clean. You're gonna hear how it sounds. And even if that's too distorted, you can play with this knob so it's not as crazy. On to the third tip. It's going to deal with our master channel. So you see the only thing I got, this is really our third and our fourth tip, because the only thing on our master channel is Fruity Soft Clipper. That's the only thing you're going to want to put on. And when you put it on, you don't have to touch anything. So what you don't want to put on your master is what sometimes it'll start you on. If you have it, one of these templates, uh, basic with limiter or anything that says the limiter will put Fruity Limiter on. Basically, that just makes your beat not hit as hard. So when I switched over the soft clipper, that honestly really changed things a lot with the kick in the 808. So that's definitely like that's a big tip. That's one of the most important ones today. All right. So that brings us into tip number five, and that's going to be to you take advantage of free kits and free plugins. So for example, the guitar I'm using is from this plugin called dynamic guitars this is a free plugin so there's a bunch of free like the, and then the camel crusher plugin i should use another free thing uh, i use effect plugins such as isotope vinyl it's free unstable there's another two free effect plugins that are really good and then you can even use free kits like all of these uh kits let's say the kit plug these are all their free kits so these are they even have loop kits and drum kits stem kits all kinds of stuff if you just look up free drum kits, you'll find a bunch of things. Uh, a bunch of you 
some producers who have like beat source pages and stuff they'll make free drum kits uh, I actually just not too long ago finished up my own kit uh, it's called the Joseph drum kit I'll put a link to it down in the description below it's got some good sounds in here some a couple hi-hat loops so yeah I'll put a link to that down in the description it's a free drum kit you guys can use to get yourself started next tip is gonna be I'll go into my melody here is just keep your melody simple and to not go crazy you might be looking at all these notes and thinking this looks like there's a lot but we're gonna break it down and tell you why it's actually sim simpler than it looks so there's really three parts to this there's this bottom part from the C5 notes and lower that these are just my chords here and all these are my chords so here's the first part is just the chords. A couple notes here. So these by itself don't sound good. But then I added a, li a first little melody here. So let me delete this part. And I'll delete my chords. So, so I put this part on top. This is a real simple pattern. I'm not using a lot of notes. I'm not going crazy. Sounds like this. So all of these by themselves, they don't sound very good. But if you just layer them to together, then you can make a full melody that's still simple and doesn't sound like it's all over the place. What's important is making sure like the different levels of the melody work well with each other. And that they don't get in each other's way because right now this sounds like real fluid and like it's just one melody it sounds like i just like someone's actually playing the guitar and then i didn't just do it in like three separate pieces all right let's get into our seventh tip which is gonna sit be uh don't be afraid to use loops because even though i didn't use a loop in this beat right here like every producer in the world i've definitely used loops before because you know like recently i've been seeing all over twitter like there's a bad stigma and like a negative connotation with using loops like if you use loops you're a bad producer <clears throat> you know you're not talented you're not creative or you you're just suck at making loops if you have to use other people's but that's definitely not true at all uh, you know like there's nothing wrong with using a loop especially if you're gonna change the loop so much and work with the loop really well so it doesn't you can't even tell like where it originally came from but even if you literally just have another producer sends you a loop you don't even touch it you think it's perfect just the way it is and you throw drum, drums on it i mean that's just like how collaborating works like nick mira tweeted a couple weeks ago that like half the beats he makes are with loops so there's nothing wrong at all with using loops and don't be afraid to use loops so the tip is to use instruments as sounds and to not worry about their labels so if you told me if you gave me an instrument you told me this instrument's a piano as compared to this instrument's a pad, I'm going to use, I'm going to make the beat in, or the melody with those instruments in two different ways, because I know one's a piano and one's a pad. But I think that instead of doing that, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend just taking, don't worry about like if it says keyboards, for example, to like feel like you have to take these and make chord progressions with them or anything, and just to use them as sounds, just to use them to make the melody that sounds best and don't feel like if it's a piano you have to use chords or if it's a pad you have to use long drawn out notes or if it's a bell you have to do like real quick notes and quick patterns or anything like that because if you do that you'll just like you'll get stuck with some of these sounds especially because at least in Omnisphere a lot of these sounds can be out there like some stuff you won't hear anywhere else so it's just like you might not even know how to use it at first but if you just keep your mind locked in that it's a keyboard, then you're like limiting yourself to what you can do with the sound. So that's why I don't recommend doing that. The next tip at number nine, ninth tip is you're gonna when you're making the melody. Uh, some people, some of you might know music theory, and you might be able to figure out that this is in the E minor scale. But 
I don't know a damn thing about music theory. So I have to come in here. And if you come up to this little, next to the uh, green magnet, this button, you click it, go under melodic scales. You can click in these scales to help you make your melody so you know what notes to click in. Uh, most of the time I use either minor natural or minor harmonic. For this one was minor natural. You see me just put these in. Uh, you also want to check off only one so it doesn't just do one. Because you want to do it every way up. So if I'm playing an E, you want to click every E. So these are all your notes. And then if you go into another channel, you'll see the ghost notes here. So if you look, you can see all my ghost notes here. And every note that I used matches up with a ghost note. Like G sharp here. I did not use G sharp anywhere because it's not in the scale. Same with F, same with D sharp. I just stuck, kept my notes in the scale. Tip number 10. So, tip number 10 is to stay organized. What I mean by that is to name everything and name it right. So when I first uh, created this uh, FLP, um, I did not know that the beat was going to be called Fire Drills. So this was probably some random letters, which is okay to do at first. Everyone does that. Just so you, because you want to make sure you're saving all the time, so in case you know shit crashes, so you don't have, you might not have time to come up with, with a good name right away. You just want to get it safe, so that's fine. But I always make sure that when I'm finished with the beat, I rename the FLP to the name of the beat. And then, if you're someone who's going to be putting your beat on BeatStars and YouTube, I always export my beat three times. Uh, the first time I export the beat is with my tag in it, which it isn't right now, and as a wave file. The tagged wave is the one I put on YouTube. Then I do a tagged one again, but as an MP3, because that needs to go in BeatStars. And then I do an untagged wave, and that also needs to go in BeatStars. So I export it three times. Not only do you do that, but I name my beats a certain way. So for example, this beat's called Fire Drill. It's 120 BPM, and I produced it. So I'll name the beat Fire Drill, parentheses, 120 BPM, and then another set of parentheses, prod G smooth. All three files are named that way, just in case if I ever send the beat to an artist uh, and the engineer is working with the song, he knows what BPM it's in. And in case they forget who produced it, they know because my name's on in that way, I don't get screwed over in any way. Tip number 11 is that having a good mix can be the difference in your beat sounding like trash and your beat sounding like solid, like I think this one sounds. So you might have noticed a lot of these, like I don't even touch a lot of these knobs. I mean, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but like in this instance, I didn't have to move stuff down that much. It just sounded good. But sometimes I also play with these uh, ones instead of down here. It's just a preference sometimes. It's just random, whatever I do. But these and these are like, they just control the volume. So as you can tell here, my mix, uh, my mix sounds pretty good. <laughs> So like, if, if I just play with these real quick, like if I bring my hi-hat all the way up, and then my clap down and my snare up more, and turn my kick down, and then this down, like listen to how bad it could sound. But the biggest thing of mixing is leveling. Leveling, if you level right and have a soft clipper on the master, your mix will be already better than most people's. And then the third part of that is really EQing so nothing's clashing with each other. And if nothing's clipping. Basically, if you just do all those things, you're good. I like, so my, so for example, so my kick doesn't clip, I'll put a clipper on it. Like most of the time, my kick hits right around zero. Because you don't want it like this. Because that just sounds terrible. So you basically do those things for mixing. And your mix will sound pretty good. Uh, if you guys want uh, an in-depth video on how I really mix my beats, I could like really get into detail about it. Let me know in the comments. I could make a video about that too. Tip number 12, don't let your 808 and your kick clash. So let's just solo the kick in the 808. So you can see sometimes, like right there, I have the kick hit without the 808. I do that just so it doesn't sound like the same the whole time, just to give the beat variety. But you know, this kick and 808, they sound pretty good together. One is what I mentioned is don't have them hit at the same time. So you see the kick hits here and here and here. Well, the 808 won't. 
Another one is sometimes, I didn't have to do it here, but if your kick and if the exact kick and 808 sound that you selected, if they don't sound like they just don't mix well together, you can reverse the polarity of the kick and sometimes that fixes it. Or at least improves it and makes it sound better than the original. But sometimes if the kick and the 808 just don't sound together good together, sometimes you just have to switch one of them out because some sounds will sound better than other ones. Uh, next, we got tip number 13, just a simple one about 808s again. So if you hear my 808, it's pretty short. That's because it used to look like this and sound like this. But I took the out knob and turned it down all the way so it sounds more, just not as, not as, like it doesn't just go on forever. Because if we play the whole beat with this, it doesn't sound as good. And the other thing you need to do is make sure it cuts. You hit the wrench and hit cut self. So what this means is when after the first 808 hits and then the second one hits, the first one will get cut off because the second one hit. Tip number 14 is to use arrangement to make your, your beat sound more interesting. Uh, so this is really important for like if someone's listening to your beat on YouTube to like keep them involved and This doesn't mean you have to have a beat switch and all your beats like some crazy sicko mode type Beat switch going on, but just like for example here This is like my intro sort of so I've got the guitar the hi-hat and the clap and the snare playing And then I cut the drums out And then it hits I do it again. I do something similar here. I take the hi-hat for this part the last two bars here I just let my the bell play and it creates a cool little drop same thing here uh, when it goes from the hook to the verse I cut the drums for the first half of this, this uh, for the first two bars and then for the next two and I have this narrative. just little things like that or even doing like drum fills to lead up to a drop or using effects as long as you don't go crazy with them and keep them simple like they had nice little touches you just don't want to make it too out of control to where the rapper feels like the beats all over the place and they can't even rap on it because so much is changing and so much is going on tip number 15 is going to be the layer sounds which is actually something i don't do in this beat but it's something i do a lot so what that means is we'll go back into my guitar melody because it's I could have easily have done it here. So last time I, we were here, I broke this down. So basically what I could have done is I can keep this whole thing how it is. And I, I could have taken these chords and I could have copied them and pasted them into a pad, for example, and then left them here and the pad and it would have gave that some more depth. I could have maybe took a flute, put the high notes here and on a flute and add a little flute to it. And then instead of making my own bell melody, which I did, I could have just taken that bell sound and copied it into here. So we're getting down into tip number 16 here, and that's to not go overboard with effects. So this is, I have four effects, or I wouldn't count the EQ, so I got two effects on this guitar. That's more than I normally use. Sometimes I don't even do anything, and it still sounds good. So I decided to add reverb and delay to the guitar. On the bow, I don't even have anything. If you're going to be using an effect most often on an instrument, reverbs are pretty good to be using. Uh, what I like to do is I put it on the large hall preset and then this bass knob will be turned up. I turn it turned up like this. I turn it all the way down and then I just play with this knob because like this it sounds out of control. So I just bring it around the half or like a fourth of the circle filled. It just it makes the melody more full, especially when it's just something like a guitar and the chords aren't that drawn out. Uh, it makes it sound more full. Tip number 17. Is you don't have to finish your melody before you start your drums now like 90 percent of producers make the melody first so the first thing i did was make the guitar but then i don't remember exactly i made this beat a few weeks ago but i'm pretty sure right when i was done with the guitar i don't think i came in and did this bell normally i'll only do like the main part of the melody and then i really won't really know how i want to bring a counter melody in so i'll do some drums just to get like a bounce going so normally so the, like the hi-hat clap and the snare, it's the, the drums are very simple, it's just these and then a kick and an 808. 
There's nothing wrong with having simple drums too, because along with keeping melody simple, don't go crazy with your drum patterns and like have 19 perks and open hats all going crazy at the same time. Feeling like feeling like you have to fill in every single space on like the drum pattern, because then that just, along with making a melody too complicated, then that just doesn't give the rapper room to rap on the beat. All right, tip number 18. Doesn't have too much to do with actual production itself. It's just to listen to different music. And different music can ra range from like. If you only listen to rap, different music can be listened to a whole other genre, but it can also just, there's so many genres within rap or within other big genres of music that that counts too. Like, for example, if you're someone who only listens to old school rap, and like, or artists like that, and you're listening to a lot of Kendrick and a lot of J. Cole, a lot of lyrical stuff, like, listen to a trap album, like someone like Smoke Perp, or someone like a Low Pump, not even for the lyrics themselves, if you, even if you don't think those guys are like talented artists, like, listen to it more for the production itself or listen to other genres for the production itself because from listening to different beats and so many different styles you can just hear something in a beat that you would have never thought to do like that's happened to me so many times where I'm listening to a beat and like they'll do something I never thought to do and that just gives me a whole other idea for like something I can do that I wouldn't have done otherwise and even if I listen to a song I don't like like I try listening to a song it turns out I don't like it but I can pick up something from the production that's still a win our second to last tip is that patience is the key so uh, that's honestly like what the biggest thing you can take away from this is that patience is the key because when I first started the first beat I ever made was trash I was impatient and wanted to get it out on YouTube and I just put the first beat I ever made on YouTube and it was complete trash another thing that has to do with patience is the second beat I ever made I did paid SoundCloud promotion for which is just like the worst idea of all time one because SoundCloud's kind of dead and two, because it was the second beat I ever made. Still trash, promoted for no reason. Another thing with patience is just like, melody specifically are definitely harder than drums. I think most people could agree on that. But it really just, the easiest way to get better is just to like keep doing it over and over again, and you just will get better and just be patient because, I mean, I've been producing for like a year and a half now. It took me like nine months to get my first sale and like every few months I could feel myself getting better and better at making beats. Like there's like seven stages on my, if you go on my YouTube channel, there's like 400, 300 beats or something. And you can break those beats into like six or seven big groups, like 40, 50 beats each. And you can tell if you go from group to group, I get better with each group of beats. Like you just keep improving as the time goes on. So, you know, some people, uh, they, they get better faster than others. You know, some people, this just clicks better. Some people, they work harder. So they're going to get better. You know, the more you do this, the better you're going to get. If you make one beat a day for a year and two beats a day for a year, most likely the person doing two beats a day for a year is going to be better by the time the year's up. So you just be patient with it. And lastly, is uh, have, make sure you're having fun and like actually enjoying your time when you're doing this. Because if you're making beats and you're sitting here like hating making beats, uh, well, first of all, two things on that is one, if you're just not good at them, don't hate it if you're just not doing good because you, you will improve as time goes on. So don't feel like as soon as you hop in FL Studio, you have to be like the next Wheezy, the next Turbo, and the next Metro Boom, and like you're just going to be the best producer and you're going to make fire beats right away. Like Don't let that stop you from having fun. But at the same time, like don't, like maybe you're making beats and you're like kind of enjoying it, you're just kind of doing it, it's like an all right time for you, and then you make a sale. Like don't let the sale like, sales definitely motivating to get. I was really motivated when I got my first sale. But, like, don't let that be the sole purpose of why you're making beats. Because then your beats are probably going to get stale. And you're going to be making a lot of beats that sounded like the beat that got you your fa first sale. And you might not be. Like, it's going to just take some creativity away from you if you let the money control what you, how you make your beats. So, yeah, that covers everything I have here in my notes. So, yeah, 20 tips for every beginner producer. If you guys got any questions about making beats, let me know in the comments below. I'll read through all the comments. I'll answer all of them. If anyone's got any questions. Um, if you guys got any uh, videos you want to see me do, any tutorials you want me to do, like how to make beats like a certain producer, like specific aspects of producing you want me to touch on, or like I don't know much about like the music industry, but you can ask me questions about that. I'm down to do videos on anything. So yeah, just let me know. I uh, hope uh, these tips helped you. If they did, I'd appreciate leaving a like, sharing with a friend, as a producer if they need some help and yeah thank you guys for watching and uh see you in the next video